Hey guys, how the hell are you? Time for an all new unbiased gear review on this. This new Rykard 7 string model. Okay, so let's talk some specs on this guitar because we've got a lot of wood porn to go over. Taking a look at the back, we have a swamp ash body with this set through quilted sapile neck. And let me see if I can get a good shot of that figuring. There we go. Dig that, that quilted sapile. Speaking of intense figuring, we've also got this quilted maple top on the swamp ash body with this beautiful trans black finish. Very, very highly buffed out. We have an ebony board with 24 stainless steel frets. We have hip shot tuners. We have a Floyd Rose Pro uh, seven string double locking tremolo. We have a master volume. We have a three-way blade switch. And we have a pickup company that this is literally my first ever experience with them. This is Carondelet. Uh, this is their secret sauce set. Okay, so first of all, fair warning, this may not be something that seems as unbiased of a gear review as it normally would be because it is what it is. Nate Reichardt is a friend of mine, uh, a very good friend of mine. He only lives about a mile down the road from me, so we hang out on a weekly basis. And when he first started building this thing, I was like, oh my God, that is awesome. I love the body shape. This is looking absolutely sick. Please finish it up. Please let me feature it on the channel. He finished it up. This is gonna be one of his stock builds, something that he's going to be putting up for sale pretty soon. I know he's going to be taking it to some guitar shows pretty soon. And then if it doesn't sell at those guitar shows, he might be posting it up on his reverb store. I will link his reverb store in the description below. But man, this thing is killer. First of all, just aesthetically, this is a beautiful instrument. Like I said earlier, a lot of wood porn on this thing. I mean, the stain is awesome. Extremely high buff gloss finish, so it doesn't have that gym floor feel at all. The back of the neck plays like butter. It is so good. The fretwork, as you would probably have guessed, is absolutely incredible based on what we've already seen from Nate and his instruments that we've previously featured on the channel. This is kind of a continuation of his awesomeness. It's perfectly leveled down the length of the fretboard. Beautiful fret ends. This is a damn comfy instrument to be playing on. Everything is just lining up so nice and perfect and flush. The finer appointments on here are really nice too. We do have some strap locks on here. The 
hip shot open gear tuners are pretty to look at. The chrome actually looks not bad at all alongside the trans black. I'm more of a black hardware guy myself, but even I've got to admit, hey, it looks cool. It looks damn cool. One thing I want to talk about really quick is a few little details that kind of make this build uh, exceptional. Because I love guitar builders that try to think of things that may not seem like they're super important to most other guitar players until you find them on a custom shop instrument. Then it's like, oh my God, I wish everyone did this. So a few things, first of all, the uh, back plates are Swamp Ash because he did want them to be matching with the body and this sort of trans black finish, but also being that it is Swamp Ash. We do have recessed cavity covers here. We've also got a little bit of a groove there that you can kind of get your finger into once you unscrew this to kind of help pop it out. Great, great beveling and kind of sanding away right here at the cutaway some super super easy access to all 24 of the frets this thing is a lead player's dream i wish i was a better goddamn lead player like i feel like this instrument in my hands is a little underserved i feel like this needs to be in the hands of a true shred god and i'm just not that guy but oh my god like this is a perfect instrument for soloing on besides that you know i do like the addition of the strap locks so that it doesn't need to be an aftermarket thing that's super cool obviously nate is a custom shop so if there's certain things that you want changed up if you wanted to perhaps get one of your own he could probably accommodate you on that one thing I also wanted to point out I love the placement of everything here the placement of the control knob is nice but what really gets me going is the placement of the three-way blade switch. This is perfect, perfect placement for like when you're playing rhythm and then you just want to quickly switch up to the neck Oh my God, that is just perfect, perfect placement. Like stress-free, you're not having to get your hand into a weird position or anything like that. It is perfect where that switch is. There again, it's one of those things that you don't necessarily think about. It might be something that playing a different instrument, you might be like, eh, it's not that big of an issue until you play one like this that the builder actually thought to do that. It's like, oh my God, that's, that's rather neat. That's rather awesome, you know, and it's just one of the many finer details that you find on this thing that's like, oh, that's, that's awesome. That's great. So how does this thing sound? Especially considering that it's got some pickups in it I have never even heard of until I got my hands on this guitar. Oh, oh, it sounds gnarly. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about it. I just want to keep playing it. It it it's rad. It it's so rad. <laughs> Part of me really wants to know like the technical specs on these pickups because something about them is just really speaking to me. 
and I'd really like to know like what kind of magnets were used, DC resistance and that sort of stuff. But at the same time, I'm kind of happy being in the dark because it's allowing me to assess how awesome these basically unknown pickups are on a purely by ear basis. I'm loving the tone of these. And I, I think that they're really speaking to me and the kind of stuff that I like playing. The chug riffs, lots of death metal stuff that has plenty of articulation. So it's just got enough brightness to really kind of add just the right amount of pick chirp without getting like too shrill or anything like that. But at the same time, plenty of mid-range to cut through. That neck pickup is pretty sick too. As I fuck up a riff that I wrote, but dude, like I, I almost don't even want to talk about it. I just want to keep playing it. It just sounds so good. That combined with just how good the thing feels and how well it plays, you don't want to put this down. <laughs> My final thought on this guitar is that I kind of wish I just had the money to throw down on it right now because don't get me wrong there's some things that personally speaking I wish were a little different I would much prefer to have this be a reverse headstock I would much prefer to have black hardware on here there again that's just a personal thing but even with like a handful of stylistic things, I would still throw down the money on this just to own it because it plays that goddamn good. I don't want to give it back to Nate. I don't know, maybe a custom build for me in the future. I am giving it a hell of a lot of thought, but this thing just plays and sounds that awesome that I just don't want to give it up. Everything about this, there's so much thought and attention to detail that went into the crafting of this guitar that, I mean, I, it's, it's exceptional. It really is exceptional. Damn, does it have good tones. Damn, does it 
sound and play equally awesome. It's just an incredible, incredible instrument. This is kind of what you want from a custom guitar builder. You want someone who's going to create something that is super cool, super unique, is very, very eye-pleasing. It's very pleasing to look at, pleasing to listen to. I, I've got nothing to really find at fault on this instrument beyond just personal aesthetic things. I mean, I would play this as is if I were to buy it and own it. I would just leave it alone and just jam away. It is, it's so fucking rad. But Arnold, what are you drinking today? I am so glad that you asked. Today, I am gonna indulge a little bit. So this is a bottle that I picked up last year and it was so good that on my other channel, I had to reshoot my year end top 10 list because I picked this thing up and I was like, oh, my God, that is incredible. And it was way better than a lot of other stuff that made my top 10 list. This is Jack Daniels twice barreled special release. Now, supposedly this is going to be a core release that is going to be coming out in the future with a significantly lower proof than this. And I have not heard good things about that one with the lower proof, but this one is rather Awesome. This is a limited release that actually has a specific bottle number here, but this is an American single malt. The first Jack Daniels that was released that was strictly an American single malt. So it's not Tennessee whiskey like we're known to get from Jack Daniels. It is single malt, meaning it is strictly malted barley. This one has been uh, finished in Oloroso sherry casks. So there's a lot to look forward to this. I have reviewed this already on my channel. By the way, if you're not already subscribed to it, head over to youtube.com slash Arnold Drinks and you can see me review various whiskeys and brews that I have in my collection. But, oh my God, this is just an incredible one. Oh gosh. So right away, lots of fruit forward notes, lots of apricot, dark fruits in there, a bit of plum, bit of fried dough and chocolate coming through there. God damn, that is so good. That is such a rich, rich flavor. Obviously sherry finished, all of those fruit forward notes that were in the aroma are coming through big and bold in the flavor. Lots of apricot, plum, maraschino cherry. You've got a bit of like a blackberry thing that's in there too. There's a ton, a ton of fried dough and chocolate notes that come through from this whiskey too. So that's something that I tend to get from whiskeys that have a higher malt content or that are just strictly an American single malt. I tend to get a lot of fried dough notes out of those kinds of whiskeys. And I don't necessarily get those same kind of notes from other single malts. So I don't really get them from scotches, for example, or Irish whiskeys or anything like that. I tend to mostly just get them from American single malts, which is kind of a cool little thing about American single malt is that it's got that note and I really, really like that note. This is fantastic. It's also super limited and super expensive on the secondary market. So I highly recommend do not try to track it down and pay those exorbitant prices the bourbon bunnies are hawking this thing for. If you happen to spot one at retail price, meaning below $100, pick one up because this is stupid incredible. And if I were to ever spot another one at sub 100, I would get a second bottle. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to this channel, tons more of this content to come. And as always, remember, take what you do seriously, do not take yourselves too seriously.